Good morning, everybody. I greet you this morning in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we gather this morning, and as we read your word, we pray that you will minister to our souls. And through your word, help us to live a God-directed life, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The sermon this morning is titled, Losers Don't Fail to Win, Losers Fail to Participate. Our scripture reading this morning is coming from the modern King James Version, Ecclesiastes 9 verse 11. It reads as follows, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong nor yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happens to them all. Those of you who were around in 1988-1989, maybe even earlier, you would know a gentleman called, or know about a gentleman called Wally Hayward. Now, Wally won the Comrades Marathon for the first time on his first attempt way back in 1930. He was 21 years of age. And 20 years later, he competed again and won it from 1950 to 1954, except for 1952, when he chose to rather represent South Africa at the 1952 Summer Olympics in Helsinki. Now, in 1954, Wally broke the uprun record and became the oldest man to win the race at age 45. But here's the thing. In 1988, Wally returned once again to to participate, and he beat half the finishers with a time of 9 hours and 44 minutes. But his most dramatic moment came the following year, in 1989, when he completed the down run at the age of 80. There was hardly a dry eye in the stadium as he staggered across the line and he made the cut of time by only 1 minute and 57 seconds. And to this day, Wally has the distinction in the record books of being the oldest finisher in the history of the Comrades Marathon. In 1988 and 1989, in my eyes, Wally was a winner. And like Wally, even right now, hundreds if not thousands enter races and marathons with no expectation of actually winning it, but to finish it. And this morning, in this sermon, our attention is going to fall onto seven words of this morning's scripture reading. The race is not to the swift. And as we work through the sermon, please keep in mind that sermon title, Losers Don't Fail to Win, They Fail to Participate. Now it might have seemed illogical when Solomon wrote that the race is not to the quickest, yet at the same time, the one who crosses the line first is on that day the quickest And therefore, the race is to him or her. And the quickest person from two points, let's say from point A to point B, may not win the race because of a number of things, including injury, tiredness, obstacles, etc. So actually, what we're talking about right now is we have two quickest. And in order to appreciate having two quickest, we have to instead turn our attention to what it means to win the race. To win simply means that someone crossed the finish line first. He or she was the first one to complete the race. So in a sense, the goal is not to win the race, but to complete the race that you started. The first to cross the finishing line was Jesus Christ. 
It is written in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 57, But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And furthermore, Paul in 1 Corinthians 9 verse 24 writes, Do you not know that those running in a race all run, but one receives the prize? So run so that you may obtain. Now in times gone by, a president or a judge of games held on to this prize, and he gave it to the winner. And Paul is speaking into your and my journey through this life, that we should run it like races in a race. And as people in a stadium would have seen these runners run and seen these people finish, so too will the manner in which you participate and complete your life's journey hopefully be an evangelical statement. Now most people might be able to sprint a short distance in a straight line, but your race and my race of life is anything but a short and uncomplicated journey. Did you realize that the rest of your life, the rest of my life, is going to testify about our integrity, our perseverance, our courage, our endurance, our faithfulness, our character, our motives? I realized another thing. As with a marathon which takes a lot of planning, Life itself requires planning. And revisiting that moment where we said the race of life is anything but a short and uncomplicated journey, we have to say to each other that planning is bringing the future into the present so that you can do something about it. And the key here is future into the present. And the same is true when you run a marathon. Let's think about Noah's race just for a moment here. And try to visualize standing in Noah's shoes. It was not raining when he started building the ark. Yet the one who instructed him to build the ark was the only one who knew exactly what the future holds. So I'm kind of thinking that Noah may or may not have understood the task at hand. I mean, why build a boat? But he faithfully followed God's instructions and trusted God with the outcome. So the story of Noah is not as much about the ability to build as it is to keep on building. I can imagine that Noah felt like giving up and that there were many trials along the way. But Noah completed the race set before him. The ark was built before the great rains. And let us think about Nehemiah's race through life. The wall was about four kilometers long, 12 meters high, two and a half meters thick, and had 34 watchtowers. But yet, 52 laters 52 days later, done, wall complete, from rubble to completion in 52 days. And no matter how much opposition there was, Nehemiah kept his eyes on the goal. He was not distracted, he was not discouraged, he was not depressed in such a manner that the depression rendered him down and out. He trusted God to build it, not himself. He didn't put his trust in his own abilities, but in his availability to God. And all the while, he's focusing on a future event, a completed war. And that is why we say here that planning is so important, because to build a boat requires planning. What do you do first? What do you do next? How do you do it? And you can complete the picture for yourself. Building a four kilometer long wall in 52 days at that time was an amazing feat, but it required planning.
First the foundation, then what? What should a watchtower look like? You see, in accomplishing these feats, there was an interaction between planning, the will of God, and trusting in God. And that, brothers and sisters, is how a marathon works. You've got to visualize crossing that line. What do you need to do first? What do you need to focus on? How do I prepare for this thing? But anyway, let's quickly read Hebrews 12 verse 2. It stands there, looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and sat down at the right of the throne of God. You see, for the joy that was set before Christ, he endured the cross. Jesus didn't give up because he could see past the pain, past the cross, past the grave, into the glory that awaited him. So he endured and climbed up Calvary's hill. As Christians, we acknowledge and we realize that Jesus is the forerunner, the first one in. But just as he did, we must endure for the joy that will be revealed through us. And no, I don't think we'll ever fully know how much it cost to see his blood upon the cross. But Jesus did it out of love for you and for me. He endured. So brothers and sisters, this brings us to a basic choice in terms of participating in and completing the race of life. Your two choices are with God or without God. And we're saying to each other this morning that our lives will have obstacles and diversions. And yes, at some point, we are all going to face our own mortality. At some point, we're going to see loved ones be born. And we're going to say goodbye to loved ones. On the one hand, we're going to experience joy, gratitude, serenity, interest, hope, pride, amusement, altruism, satisfaction, relief, inspiration, awe, and love. But on the other hand, we will also experience anger, annoyance, sadness, guilt, fear, anxiety, discouragement, despair, apathy, disappointment, and frustration. And I again ask you, how do you choose to run the race of life, with or without God? According to researcher Fredrickson, we actually need a ratio of three to one between positives and negatives in order to have a good life. And that statement caused me to think long and hard. You see, the fruit of the Spirit are all positives. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, humility, and self-control. Negativity for us who are busy with our life's race is not an option, but instead an opportunity to evangelically testify about integrity, perseverance, courage, endurance, faithfulness, character, and our motives, because Jesus has finished the race, and we, in Him, too, will cross that line. I started the sermon by stating, that we will only focus on that part, the race is not to the swift. And although this did not make natural sense, my prayer is that it now makes perfect sense, as long as we remain in Him. So, go forth this week. Stand in a living and trusting relationship with God. Be willing to start over if you must, but this time, in the power of God and not in the power of self. Keep your eyes focused on God and not in the power of self. 
Focus on the goal that God has placed before you, whether it's building an ark or building a wall. Cross that line. Look past your current pain and difficulty and persevere in His strength. After all, losers don't fail to win. They fail to participate. In and by the grace of God, we will all cross that finish line. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that when you put a goal in front of us, you also give us the strength and every means necessary to accomplish that goal. We pray in this week that you reveal yourself to us as we go through this act of living and that we turn every negative, every pothole, every unexpected turn, all our frustration and negative emotions, that we turn these into a God-glorifying outcome. We pray for strength to do that, knowing that you're with us with your Holy Spirit. We pray this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go forth, be encouraged, and live this week to his glory. Go and finish this race that we are partaking in. Amen.